Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be installing the map light in the car behind me. You know, I started this video at 11 o'clock this morning. It's currently 9 p.m. on Saturday night and I'm just finishing it up. I thought this was going to be an easy install, but I ran into a lot of hiccups. So make sure you watch all the way through it. See what went wrong and what, had, what I had to kind of make work for me. All right, well, let's get into the car. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clock dash. Removing this will let me see what the wiring looks like back there so I can make sure that I know what I'm getting into and that I can map, up the, map out the wiring diagram that I have on the computer to what comes with the clock. So let's go ahead and take this out. So on the 69 Mustang, the clock light's actually located here under the clock. You'll see an area for the switch and then you'll see an area for the light to come out. You know, I originally thought it was a vent for something, but it's actually a light and light switch. Luckily, it's only a few screws and some wires. There is, I think, three screws holding it up top to the dash pad. Then there's two holding it down over here. So when I put this car together the first time, I knew that I was gonna get this at some point. So I do have everything labeled. It looks like right here is where the map light is gonna go to. I'm gonna double check on the diagram to make sure that it's correct, but it should just connect in with one wire. All right, so we have the original dash here. Yeah, it's in good condition, I've done a few tabs broken off. Here's where the map light is gonna go. So it should just drop into place and be able to be screwed in. So it doesn't look too bad. Screws come from the bottom of here and it looks like they self tap into this. So we'll be able to do that first. But first let's go ahead and put this in the car, power it up, make sure everything works. So my understanding of the wiring is there is an extra wire here. So it's a three way switch where you can have it turn on when the glove box opens or you can have it just use a switch. I don't think I have a glove box switch or glove box light right now, so I'm just going to end up wiring it up directly in and utilizing the switch for now. But let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay. Now let's give the, let's put some power to the car. Nothing. All right, maybe we have to have the keys on or the lights on. Let's go ahead and take a look. Lights. Nope. Okay, maybe you need to have the keys on for this to work. See, we have our clock lights working. Nothing here yet. Interior lights? Nope. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and try with the ignition on the on position. All right, here's where I'm ending up with this light. So this assembly here is no good. The, the wiring and connections that were made are not working. And I'll show you how. So, let's see. I'm gonna check green. So there should be a short passing through. There should be connectivity to this green here. Yeah, you hear that? All right, now we're gonna check this black wire. So this black wire is, comes from here all the way down directly to this switch. So here to here, we have nothing, which is unfortunate because without this, I can't put, get it together. Um, so it looks like the connection down here is good. You can see the solder joint in there looks fine. It's something on this connector end that just isn't working. You know, I could, and I might just buy another connector and do it myself, rather than work with this. You know, that's what I'll do. These are simple trailer connectors. So let's go ahead and replace it. We're just gonna do a sanity check here. I'm actually gonna bypass this connector. Let's see. Yep, this is the connector. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, it looks like the switch is working the way that it should. 
Okay, so I'm shorting across this black lead because this black lead isn't working. Um, off, because it's on this third wire for the glove box light. Center. I guess I gotta go find a connector for this because this one isn't gonna work and I'm not gonna cut this apart. To the hardware store. All right, so we're back. You notice we have a new trailer connector. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna double check to make sure that this is bad. So black to black here, nothing, no connection. You probably see the one there. Here. All right, let's check the trailer connector. White to white here. Connected. Okay, other side, red to red. Connected like it's supposed to be. So my guess is it's this connector here is junk. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cut it off. So there's a chance that it's in this wire. Kind of unlikely, and we'll check that really quickly right here. Let me splice this. So we're gonna go ahead and check this wire, so black to black again. Black to black. You see we have connection now. So that means this right here is junk. You have to replace it with something better. Not even better, just, yeah, it is better. I mean, overall, you can see the molding quality of this compared to this is significantly better. Um, one of them, this one here, is a lot of flashing on it. So they put it in, they over mold it, and it leaves a lot of uh, extra rubber on it. You know, they really didn't care about the quality of this too much. You can see this one here, I bought it advanced for a few dollars. Significantly better quality. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this and put it together. So I'm gonna just do the same wire codes. So green is going to white, black is going to red. You know, it's not the best soldering job, but it's pretty good for what I'm trying to do. Let's go ahead and test it one more time now that we have a good connector on it. Black side here. Black over here. I'm sure you can hear the buzzing. It's working. White side. Green, yes, you have a connection. Okay, so this is fixed. No, we replaced it. We're gonna end up going ahead and put it in stock right now. So this is exactly why we test things before we put them in the vehicle. Because if we didn't do this, we'd be tearing everything apart one more time. So we're gonna go ahead and mount it now in the dash and get it right. All right, time for the moment of truth. Lights on. Clock lights are on. It works. All right, so we're all set. Now we can go ahead and start putting everything back together, but it looks like the clock light is good with the replacement of the two flat connector. All right, now that we have this ready to go in, we'll go ahead and use the self-tapping screws to hold it in place. Only kit map lights, deluxe, three screws, two holes. All right, looks like we're only using two. OK, 
Okay, that is in place. So the map light, the switch underneath it. I mean, it's an okay fit, it's not the best. Cool, all right, we're gonna get this back in my car now. Okay, so we do one more check of this. Make sure the switch and everything works while it's in place. Off, hold on. Seems to work, so we're going back together. Pretty much all the way in, you know, we have the map light now for those days when we need some light in the car. Um, so there we have it. A small project turned into a big project. You know, it's supposed to take maybe 45 minutes to an hour to do this today on the Saturday. It ended up taking pretty much all day looking for parts, fixing pieces, and putting it back together. It's always fun here on Smacky's Garage. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.